And I'm so appreciative for all the people who were not giving me job uh, just because otherwise I would most probably work in now somewhere in the company, like staying till late nights and like doing, trying to beat the sales uh, like uh, targets and so on. So like I'm really happy that I got so much rejections and it was really a ridiculous rejection. Welcome back. I'm your host Andres Sanchez. Today I have Anatoly Lebowski, the owner of GSM Growth. Did I get that right? Yeah, Anatoly Lebinsky, GSM Growth. All right. Well, day one point for me to start off here. Brother, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, we got connected through social media. I've had a, a few people in your niche, but you have a very unique story behind your journey. Um, and I, I think everybody watching is going to really enjoy it. So thank you again for taking the time to be here. I appreciate for inviting because like uh, I put for myself in 2023 as a goal, as a mission to be in more uh, kind of shows to share my experience, to share my skills, to share my background. First of all, to motivate. Secondly, like to give some kind of golden nuggets, which is people looking for to find out the solutions for their problems. And the thirdly, like I always hoping that at least one single person will be listening and not just like saying, oh, it was good or like, wow, it was mind blowing or whatever. Actually, he will take the notes and take the action. That's really the problem. People listening, saying, wow, it's great, but not taking action. And that's my goal. At least one person out there always like once in a while texted to me, hey, bro, like one time, like, wow, that's cool. That That's basically what I'm trying to, to get. Well, I love it. Hey, Beyond the Wealth podcast listeners, let's make this happen. If you're listening, if you're interested in getting into the e-commerce space, starting a business, I think you're going to have a really inspirational story to listen to here. Take some notes, learn something, and then reach out to him and tell him that he's impacted you or, or, or guided you in a different direction and, and helped you become successful because that's my goal too. I do these things so that I can bring people like yourself on here so the entrepreneur that I was a few years back can get this type of information and learn from amazing people like you. So I think our goals are aligned here. Awesome. Yeah. Like, uh, I know that right now, definitely this kind of piece of contents really makes huge difference for some individuals. Even for me, like I, I started diving into the real estate and I like, where I'm going to be starting. Oh, podcast. Yeah. Like who is like the top podcast? Let me watch it. Let me listen to it. Like, oh, nice. And I was really first couple of weeks, just listening podcasts, nonstop on different stories, which is, was giving me some piece of puzzles to understand the whole picture. Yeah, no, podcasts are an amazing way to learn and get to hear because it's crazy. Like before podcasting and before people getting online and posting, you didn't really have access into the mind of the Mark Zuckerbergs, the Jeff Bezos and like these genius people who have shaped our world. But you didn't really get to hear their story, where they came from, how they did it. Now we have the ability with podcasts and people being much more accepting of taking information in through podcasts we're getting to learn about so many amazing people and not only like the famous people you also get people who like yourself have this amazing story of how you got to this stage and we get to learn from you as well so i'm really excited awesome. i want to go right into it you at 13 years old had to make a, a realization in life and realize that you kind of had to step up and and make it happen for your family and and really start to figure out a way to bring in more money what was that moment like in your life yeah basically like i was living just average i would say not not really poor but like average neighborhood bad, bad neighborhood life where i was uh, having a, a lot of friends some of them still like i'm friends with but like not that close as they, as before but i'm just saying uh, i had a quite good life and after that my parents got divorced and we had like a business which was running and when they got divorced, everything fell. And like, and my mom had to go, uh, she doesn't have any kind of university degree. So she had to go to like as a sales lady in the supermarket and she was working 15 hours a day on the, her legs. And like, uh, she wasn't able to pay for the bills, uh, mortgage, everything. And I, like, I was 13 year old and I realized that I, I'm only the man in the, in the family, like my sister uh, and me. My sister is older than me and like, okay, so what should I do? And I want actually, I want to go to for dates with the girls, you know, like I want to buy the phone for myself and I can't, I mean, enough. And like, it's like everyone can do that, like from, from my, my surroundings, but I can't. So I decided, okay, 
I have to make some money, help my mom, and uh, like uh, just earn some income for myself for the like teenagers to stuff. So basically, I start doing the heavy lifting job like uh, uh, construction. Uh, mostly my, my first ever job in 13 years old I've uh, been in like kind of mining place where we were just cleaning graphics which is super unhealthy for the body and I was shocked like I was like black dirty as hell like 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 a my mining guy and like when I was out of there I was working for maybe I don't know eight hours I was so dirty I was so tired it was a uh, like in the hole uh, of the some kind of stones and basically the sun was just beating us for whole day and we were just cleaning the by the toothbrush we were just cleaning the graphics like from the dust and like uh, it was my first ever experience and i like said to myself oh my god like i i don't want to like do the work at all in, anymore because when i get paid we were we won't get we will get cheated and like instead of getting paid what we would de- uh, deserve they pay us like five times less because we are kids yeah. and basically we spend on the bus more money than we got from uh, from the day spending on that work and i was so disappointed but it was just like i said to myself I, okay that's fine it's first experience and i came back home and i'm like taking shower i remember that like feeling like my mom said to me do you want to go anywhere and i like no shit, I have to find out something just else and to like start working constructions everywhere, like all the, even in the bus, taking the payments from the people, helping driver, like the different, different, different kind of works, like door to door sales and to like start making some general income. I mean, I'm not alone. A lot of guys like us are doing that in the teenager world. But the thing is that when I was making money, always around 20, 30 person, I'm just coming and gave, giving my mom. Especially like when I started working as a waiter, like 16, 17 year old, I believe I was, I was like making tips and I just bring it like almost all the tips to my mom and I just was uh, staying on the basics what I was getting paid. So yeah, because I knew that I have to help her. She, it was difficult for her to manage and my father wasn't, was successful, it was a business owner, but wasn't successful business owner. So he was full in troubles all the time and like it did kill his health. It's like destroy his body, but like he is alive. I love him. I respect him as a as a father. But like, unfortunately, he's not a good businessman. Yeah. So, were you able to go to school during this time, or did you have to completely drop out of school to work in your teenage years? Or were you able to get a traditional education? Oh, uh, actually, uh, like I was doing everything to show my mom that I will finish the school. I mean, my mom was really uh, hoping for the best for us and was working day and night for uh, getting us to university. She was taking the loans. She was refinancing the house. She was doing so much just to get us to the better place. And my uh, my sister finished the master's degree in finance and uh, I went as well for my, for, for finance. And uh, I finished my master's degree last year. I was working already full time on different jobs, but all the education period I was working usually weekends okay. all the time and nights. I'm I'm just going a bit for parties and morning Sunday I'm like destroyed, but I'm somewhere in the construction. And basically, uh, then uh, when I was in university, that was more tough because it was really necessary uh, cash which I needed to pay for the university because my mom just said, okay, I will handle this. Please make sure that you handle the rest. And like I took my first credit cards, I took my first loans to pay for the for, for, for the university and then I got obligation to work. So I was working in supermarkets at night, in the weekends uh, on the construction when it was uh, like spring, autumn holidays that we were doing, like me and my buddies, we were just doing some construction work or, or even were selling pumpers in the supermarkets. I mean, it was different, different kind of stuff. Just like if there is some cash, we are there. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just young age, which is, was necessary. I was calling that as a survival mode, but I now I understand that it was hustle. Yeah. I mean, I had a, I built a hustle muscle just like to survive, to, to be independent, even in the young age until 2013 when I decided I broke up with the long relationship with the girlfriend and I decided to see the world because I never been ever like outside of my city I mean I've been in my region cities next to it and it was like 70 kilometer city away it was looks like it's like 550 miles it was looks like oh my god this is the trip 
Yeah. 50 miles. So I can just come to you. I spent, I, I didn't travel 40 miles. Yeah. Something like that. So, and that time, like, it was really a big trip because, like, we never had, like, uh, petrol or cash for the petrol or whatever to, to go somewhere. And basically, I said to myself, I would, whatever it takes, I will go to other country. I, like, opened the international passport, which I never had. And basically, one of my friends got luck to go to UAE, mm-hmm. Dubai. And I asked him, hey, is there any possibilities for me to pass the interview? I didn't know English. I couldn't speak yeah, English. I was just like a random guy. And he said, yeah, well, there is a passboy position. Would you like? I will wait for your interview. I like, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sure. What is passboy? <laughs> I have no yeah. idea. And I already mastered that degree. I got uh, uh, education. I, I like worked in the, in the bank. I understand in the bank I won't make good money. I went to the private sector in the sales. And I wasn't care about what I'm built here. I knew that I have to go somewhere else. I want, and plus it will help my mom financially. And basically, like, pass boy, I don't care what is that. And after that, I ask, what is that? Oh, you're going to be cleaning the dirty plates from the tables and bring to washing area. Like, ooh, master degree in finance. I'm, I said, I mean, <laughs> like, I don't care. So, yeah, I passed the interview. It was funny. I, like, the guy, Italian guy, was speaking with me English, and I couldn't say any single word. My friend was next to me behind the camera who understand English, was just, like, explaining to me what to, to do. It was so, like, weird. But then, anyway, I passed the interview somehow and uh, went to UAE. I, first of all, it was Abu Dhabi, Formula One Circle. It was my first international trip. It was so scared. I was so scared. I was, like, insanely shocked. I went to UAE with $60 in my pocket, and it was my grand, my, my, my grandfather who gave me those money and said, this is for you. They put it in my, like, jacket. This is for you to start a new life. I, like, I was so embarrassed because I was 23-year-old, full of uh, loans, full of uh, credit card bills, like, just read uh, 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 racing, and basically, like, I was, I, I can't complain. I was, like, having parties and all that stuff, but it was stupid life of, like, bill to the bill. And yeah. I was, always was behind with the bills, yeah. always. And I understand if I want to move somewhere and make more money, it will be not ending well. So that's why I made the decision, cut everything and uh, leave the country. And basically, yeah, like, it, it, that is where my life starts slowly, slowly changing since 2013. And then 2017, I jumped into the e-commerce. So just for people to understand, Ukraine was where you were originally when we're talking about where you were located. And then the furthest trip you had taken was 50 miles down the road to the next city. And then now you're in Dubai, one of the most beautiful and modern cities in the world. What was the experience getting off? And this is early. I think you said it was like 2013. Dubai now and 2013 are are much different, but... For you, what was that experience like walking off that plane and seeing like a whole new world? Uh, I still like you now saying that asking question and I feel the goosebumps you know, on my skin because I still remember like now my life is completely different. I mean, I can say that I have quite good income, quite great business uh, businesses. So like everything is good. Life is completely changed. But when you're saying that, I just remember that like young man who like... Uh, I uh, stepped up in the plane and I was like so like scared. I don't know wh- how to treat like this kind of like uh, trip, like what should I do, who I should speak to and you know, but I was so excited and like like a kid. Yeah. <laughs> and basically when I flew to UAE, I can't speak English, nobody next to me. And uh, it was so wonderful. The driver met, uh, driver met me uh, to bring me to Abu Dhabi from Dubai. And I was looking in the window and was looking and so I seen the Burj Khalifa at that time it was something new and in 2012 they established. So like it's like one year only. And I was like feeling myself that I'm in the dream right now. And when I woke up next day, one Filipino guy was uh, shocked that I can't even speak. He was my neighbor in a flat and we were like six people in one apartment. And I like... He was shocked that uh, I can speak even English, like, and I, I don't know, like, what to do, where to go, how to buy bread, so, like, whatever, and I don't have dirhams. I have showed him $60, what should I do? He said, yeah. no worries, he gave me 200 dirhams, so, like, come on, man, no, he said, no, 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 take it, no worries, salary will come, you'll give it back, and, like, uh, I need, I see that you need help, I wasn't in your situation before, I, like, okay, thanks, 
So I, he gave it to me a local uh, cash and I went outside to the supermarket and that particular moment was giving me goosebumps. I was walking outside, I saw Arabic guys in the dresses and I saw the big cars, which I never seen like, uh, like in the United States, all these pickups and all that stuff. Arabic guys love that as well. And I was like, wow. like I was the happiest guy ever. I wasn't care that I will be cleaning plates. I wasn't care anything. I was working as donkey there for the first year. I mean, for every, every day actually was there, but the first year I was improving so much. And in the first three weeks, I got promotion. In the first three weeks, no wow. English, nothing. I was working 16 hours a day, no days off. Whatever I need to help, I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. You know, like people were speaking to me by fingers. Like they're showing to me because they, I, they understand that I can't pronounce anything. I can't understand them. But they were like just pointing by finger and I was learning like a box fork you know like, yeah and yeah this is was the step and first three weeks was really quite hell but no, i was the happiest guy ever i was excited about everything seeing all this world uh, like traveling in the bus to to the to the work i was looking around it it just insane dream became true i mean seriously that was for me a dream and i can't like then for 500 dollars in Ukraine, to understand to everyone, the average salary, it was $400 a month. And I got salary $500, but plus tips. Yeah. So at that, I was making maybe around $1,000 in the first job in UAE. Uh, but it's provided accommodation, provided food, transportation. So we just come and work as donkey. Mm. So and basically, I, I was working so hard, but I was always smiling. I mean, I was so happy for opportunities. And after that, when I start seeing guests... In the rest, and I was working in Cipriani, amazing for a worldwide franchise. Uh, it is a standard of the hospitalities. I learned a lot about customer service there. I learned a lot. A lot uh, in, like in, I, I was surprised that hospitality made me who I am in terms of customer service, in terms of how to speak with people properly and so on. And that's basically where like, I start seeing wealthy people from around the world coming to Formula One and uh, having dinner in our place and I was staying and dreaming one day I'm going to be in that in, in their place in one day in one day that was like always I was staying and just like quiet and thinking and now every time when I'm in London when I'm in uh, UAE when I'm uh, even here in Miami uh, Spain Valencia or not Valencia the Marbella like whatever, where is the city I'm visiting and there is the Cipriani, I'm definitely there. I'm visiting them, I'm smiling, I eat my favorite tartare, like, and that's for me like a, you know, tick point. Yeah. I want to visit all Ciprianis around the world because for me it means a lot. And uh, so basically that's something which is, makes me always smile. Experience was hell. I was dreaming, but I was really unhappy during the work uh, working moments because people were using me people were giving sh shit to me like uh, a lot of international guys like from turkey from everywhere like were, were really, who can speak english were really using me a lot and i couldn't answer i couldn't mm -hmm. they were bullishing me a lot and like and because i have limitations of speaking it was disaster feelings but it was a school of life first time in my life i'm outside alone responsible for myself only so, and after one year, I moved to Dubai, changed the restaurant, bring my fiance who become my wife, and there was where is the real hell being. Yeah, and, and just to highlight that conversation for the most likely spoiled people that are watching this from their computer or TV, living a really great life, it's amazing, like, that you were put in that position and you were, let's be honest, doing the lowest of the low job. But you were so happy because for you, that was an opportunity. That was your first step into the real world. And now you have this new feeling inside of being excited because you now see what you can be. You're seeing these wealthy people. You're seeing these nice cars. It's like, wow, like there, I can go and get that. I can do that is so special. And like, thank you for sharing that because some people that are successful like you might not want to talk about being a bus boy and, and kind of being down in the dumps like that. But for you, it was such an, I'm proud of it. Yeah. It was like such an integral part of your life. And it's what, you, what's made me who I am. Yeah. And like for you to be able to go back and say, 
I am who I am now because of these moments. And I learned this and this from this is so powerful. And it's amazing how life gives you these opportunities. And it's kind of up to you to make the best of it. 50% of people would have gotten that job, hated it, not done anything with it and just kind of fallen down. The other 50% do what they need to do, take away the important parts and forget about the bad parts and use it to jump to the next one. And that's what you did. You know, actually, uh, I never brought that uh, out, especially on the cameras, but this is, would be a good subject to share. So I was always embarrassed, like, that I'm working as a bus boy after that, a waiter, when I was, because when I was speaking, uh, what was I, uh, I was doing in Cipriani in Abu Dhabi, first year, I was learning English, trying to understand, like, what I'm going to be doing next, and I know that I have master's degree in finance, and I, I want to get a job, like, with my degree. We, and, we, and it will be higher paid. And this, I never thought about entrepreneurship. I, I was looking on, on my father and it was looks painful. Yeah. It was looks like disaster. So I was saying to myself, no way, only man, manager somewhere growing like on the career ladder and so on. So basically, like I was uh, first year learning and then moved to, to Dubai, I brought my, my wife and basically... I got the uh, the job because of Cipriani. It's like a high end restaurant. I got the job in the high end uh, financial district of the Dubai uh, in high end restaurant. So and there was like always uh, bankers, like business owners coming for lunch, coming for dinner, and I was selling myself. My goal was to sell myself. I was always serving them and and like sharing with them. Yeah, I'm have master degree, so they were love having a conversation with me because it was looks like the the guy. It's just hustling. And the thing yeah. is, I was always embarrassed. Like, I, I was trying to show them that I have master's degree. But I was embarrassed. What I, what are you doing here is if you are having master's degree. And I was have lack of, like, it's for every young person who is hustling now, who like, on survival mode. You have to understand one thing that, like, you have not enough experience in life to understand simple stuff that this is who you are. And when you are pushing hard and you achieve your first results that kind of background is going to be uh, what's make you uh, strong as you are today. And the thing is, when, or why, when I understand that, I was like 25, I believe. I started applying for different jobs. I applied in Dubai for more than 10,000 jobs. 10,000? 10, I sent more than 10,000 CVs without the real, like I'm, I'm not lying because I had to use the platform where I was tracking of how many CVs have been applied. 10,000 CVs plus I applied in the like couple of years and the thing is I was invited for one interview uh, I was going through the offices uh, in my free time and just sending and giving CVs to everyone everyone it's it's not the smart way actually but <laughs> still I was doing like whatever I can I just printed out 200 CVs put it in the plastic bag and just like hey hey and then the CV is a resume uh, uh, yeah it's a resume okay. so like where with my past experience in Ukraine nobody yeah. cares about past experience in Ukraine I was so embarrassed about waiter job and so on that I was making that I'm in mean, customer service and hospitality group mm -hmm. like you know and basically Hmm. One time I went for interview in one uh, veterinar, like for the pe pets, pets yep. uh, cl uh, clinical f company who has pharmaceutical and medical devices for pets clinics. So, and it was, I was looking like so, so excited because the guy who I met, he was just smoking on the park and I giving him my CV. I was like, I was always still going through the fear. To overtake that fear and doing everything uncomfortable so i started becoming feel comfortable in uncomfortable situations yeah. i was just giving cv and like hey man sorry like for the start maybe while smoking i'm just looking for the job she said i like that you like took this step to talk to me well give let me see the cv okay you've been in sales it's awesome let me speak to my general manager we saw we exchanged the numbers and the thing is that uh he he invited me for interview. He said my general manager would love to speak to you because like of I describe him what what you have done and like on the parking and we need exactly people like you. A couple of sales positions are open, but the problem is you are not from the medical field. I said no worries, I'm going to be learning. It's good. So basically, they invited me for interview, and I was sitting uh, in front in front of the general manager, the 40 year old plus guy, full of muscles. I was looking on him like so inspired because like wow, that that guy showing wealth that yeah. guy showing confidence that guy like looks amazing i like 
sitting in front of him with, in the suit. I was always giving the uh, resumes in 35, 40 plus degrees Celsius, which is around 900 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, a, a hot weather in the suit from my waiting. I had my one, only one single suit, which I was using to give the interview everywhere. And I'm sitting in this suit, like in front of him and trying to impress him. And like, he said, listen, let's speak about your current job. Like you are a, as a head waiter. And I actually was waiter, but I was reacting to like, to give some high point. Yeah. Yeah. So I like, yeah, I'm, I'm head waiter. Like, and he, let's speak about your job. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, okay. I was feeling embarrassed. But then that's what I'm like. This, all this speech, I'm trying to so share one important point. He like, yeah, I will explain you why I want to speak with you about it. In the past, my background, I was a waiter. I was working in the hospitality for over five years. And now I am who I am and where I am is just because of me. But the thing is, I learned one simple thing in the hospitality. And I want to hear from you. What have you learned in your opinion? One, the most important thing. And I will start like customer service, like upsells, like trying to impress him. He said, no, like, how I, is it the restaurant business? I said, yeah. He said, listen, what I learned from my end and tell me if I am wrong. It's a time management. And I'm like, yeah, it, it, it's true because like I understand instead of running three times to kitchen, I'm just like analyzing all the situation and running one time, but with the three, four things in the same second. So set up for the tables, like you think and you start build, like building in your brain. Uh, and I was learning that as well from some guys who are like working for, for several years in hospitalities that how to control your uh, particular uh, workspace in the way to optimize the maximum effort with minimum uh, ma- maximum effect with minimum effort. So and he said, "Yeah, that's true." He said, "Listen, you should. I see what is happening. You should not be like uh, embarrassed or whatever. I see how you are like speaking. You have to be proud of that because like it's the hospitality is the best place for learning time management, and this is your superpower." So, like, you have to keep that in mind and understanding that this is something what you have to actually speak loud about. And from that particular moment, I stopped feeling, uh, you know, like, uh, embarrassed. I stopped, like, speaking about quiet. I started speaking loud. Yeah, I was a waiter. Yeah, like, in the podcast, I'm speaking, like, like I'm a, we are making now, like, uh, eight figures for e-commerce sales, uh, like, and uh, that, that's just what is now. But on the past, like, it was really background. I was simple, like, waiter, food runner, and all that stuff. And, like, the guy shows me that I have to remember my background. I have to respect that. And he shows me how I could go to the wells by still looking at him. And, like, I was like, okay, that, that's a good thing. I would not embarrass anymore, like, of my background. That's so interesting that time management was, like, the takeaway for him. And... Like you, my first thoughts are customer service, customer experience, the way that you speak, like all of that. But I didn't think about time management until you broke it down there. And that's true. Like, okay, I've got four tables here. If I go four different times, that's wasted time. Let me wait for this one to finish up and I'll go grab them all at once. Like that type of stuff. And it's a, it's great to know that he was willing to be understanding of the situation that you were in. And instead of Because unfortunately, not everybody's a good leader. Not everybody's a good person. Some people would have sat there and just wrote you off and said, you know what? He doesn't have what it takes. Like, he doesn't know. But instead, he was like, you know what? Let me talk to him and educate him on where he can be better. Now you're in a podcast talking about it, let's say, five, ten years later. That's a pretty amazing moment. And maybe somehow that person will hear it or see it down the road. But it's amazing. I always highlight how little moments in life that in that moment it wasn't like this massive moment like that was big but it wasn't huge now it's an integral part of who you are today and a part of why you've been successful is amazing to me yeah and definitely i didn't get the job (laughs) (laughs) that that's the thing and i'm so appreciative for all the people who were not giving me job uh just because otherwise i would most probably work in now somewhere in the company like staying till late nights and like doing trying to beat the sales uh like uh 
targets and so on. So like, I'm really happy that I got so much rejections and it was really ridiculous rejections. And like from this guy, but I was hustling again. I didn't know the word hustling. I was just on survival mode. Like I got the, the business card of GM. I was texting to him when they denied me. I like, hey, I was giving him a say in the messages. He like, oh my God, bro, like you are like insane, but sorry, we need medical field person only because of that. I, I, am, I am able to learn. So I was attacking every single person and trying to get and get and get, but always, always was something wrong. And finally I, I opened the driving license and that was like kind of small game changer. Uh, from hospitality, I was able to move to like construction company who was taking care of the lighting and working with engineers. In three weeks, I learned it in English engineering stuff. I was shocked. Like I was really shocked how I was able to do that, but I was so humble, so hungry. So like uh, I, I was really needed. I was really needed. And my wife and me, we were like si excited for that. But on that job, I would start making two times less than in hospitality because I was working in the top restaurant where it was quite good income. But renting is high. We rent in just simple room with my wife, uh, like the master bedroom with another Filipino couple in the apartment. So it's two bedroom and one, one room is ours. And basically I said to my wife, I know that we won't be able to pay for the bills because I still send in money to my mom, like still helping her and so on. I said, if I will go to this job, we have to count on you only. Otherwise, we won't be able to pay for rent even. Yeah. She wasn't obviously happy, but she knew that I have to go out of hospitality to be able to move move forward to the next steps. And basically, we got that step. And after four months, we realized we cannot survive. I mean, we, 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 we went in such a broke place. I mean, at the end, I was driving, working uh, Mitsubishi Lancer. And I was like, oh, my God, yeah. that's so cool. That's so cool. But at the end, like, uh, I wasn't able to buy the freaking McDonald's for myself or anything. I mean, it was so stupid, no no money and stuff. I was borrowing from my friends cash. And, like, I was feeling embarrassed in front of my friends who are staying in still in Cipriani after three, four years. they still in Cipriani, but now they buy buying apartments in Ukraine. Now they're traveling into Asia. Now they're living life because they were saving. They were yeah. in the free accommodation, free transportation, free food. So they were saving, saving, saving. And I am always moving, always moving, always stressing, always, always something. And they're like, Anatoly, wow. I remember that moment I came one time to Abu Dhabi to my friends with my wife on the car. And we were always having party there in their apartments when I'm coming there. And they're like, oh, it starts celebrating for me that I got the job. It's insane. You are the most successful guy in, in the room. And there was like nine uh, Ukrainian guys who me and my friend who brought me to us. We brought our friends from Ukraine to Abu Dhabi after that. We brought our childhood friends because they are as well humble as us to like uh, to to change their life. And we were able to help them pass interview and so on. So basically when I was coming to their apartment, there was a bunch of my childhood friends. And they're like, Anatoly, it's insane. You got it. You got it. You like ins you you got into an insane job and so on. I was like staying and understanding that you don't see my bank account. It's like not even empty. It's it's fucked up. And it was like the, they beat in my shoulders. They're like, "Well done." And I was like, "Yeah, thank you, thank you." Now maybe some of, no, most probably some of them will be see this video and you guys understand. Like that moment wasn't really proud for me. I was destroyed. I was for like you feel I, a little bit like a fraud. Uh, it's yeah, because like, you know, I, I took a risk. It yeah. wasn't something, something was promising to me and I didn't get it. They were said to me, this is what's going to be. I like, fuck it. I have to just switch. Yeah. And I was always taking risks. And again, I didn't know that it's entrepreneurship required the taking risks on the time. And that's what make you can make you successful. And basically I took the risk. We cannot survive. Like it's real fucked up. I, I start finding out the jobs at night for uh, as a waiter in nightclubs uh, as a waiter in private villas then later on the supervisor on the such kind of events and basically like done several things just to be able to survive and it was one two times a month part-time not many not many in that moment and here you go 2017 february 2000 uh, 24 of february 2017 my wife came into the room and saying babe i'm pregnant and sit down on the couch and start crying. 
but crying not because she's happy, because she's scared. Because she's really scared and looking at her and I'm feeling destroyed as a man. Because I understand if she lose the job and she will. We will not able to pay for the room and baby can't come in the room. And yeah. deliver baby, it's like $7,000, something like that. And that time, $7,000, I never told that. Yeah, you know. And I said, no worries, let me go to the pharmacy just to get uh, another test uh, to make sure that it's correct, to make her feel a bit uh, uh, relief for the stress. And I went out, it's like 35, 36 degrees or something like that, and sunny weather, I'm walking on the parking outside and coming to the pharmacy next to our house and just stuck. I can't pass in. I'm just frozen. My my body is frozen. I can't move, and like like legs, uh, knees, everything is shaking, and I'm just staying and like just scared because I started realizing the size of the problem. Yeah, and uh, I just squeeze my arms, and first time in my life I said the biggest setup to the brain that I will not allow to my son come in this world in the financial position where I am today and I will do whatever it takes to change it that time I didn't know that it will be son but uh, my baby and basically I went after that I went inside of the pharmacy take the test came back home and said to my wife no worries I will handle and basically from that moment things start being disaster <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but at least I start taking actions which is never done before like never done so this is where like I like I sent my wife back to Ukraine because we were not able to pay for the rent when she got fired and basically I found out the job in the gas company where I was promised a lot this is another thing where you all got promised a lot and you're like oh my god that's nice but at the end I didn't get anything it was lie but the thing is that I went there and was re reading a lot of business books. And what I find out, and actually I was reading it before, but I started reading it more. So I, what I find out, I was really in love with the biography, after biography of the successful people. Mm -hmm. So, and the, one of the things which is in 2017 changed my mindset, it was Jack Ma. Yeah. Uh, his after biography. And I just, re when I got a lot of deny from different applications, I, s I feel that I have a curse, that I cannot be successful, I cannot be happy, I cannot be lucky just because, like, I have a curse. I cannot get the job, a proper job. But at the end, I read the book of, about the autobiography of Jack Ma, and he actually was denied from all the jobs which he applied. McDonald's the, uh, denied him. 25 people were applied, 24 people, uh, no, there was 24 positions, so 24 people were applied for police, and everyone got taken, and he was 25th, they denied him, only one. Yeah. And he was saying, I knew that something bigger is waiting for me, that's why I was just, was keep moving, keep going, and he found out Alibaba in 2009, oh, well, 1999. So I, I worked out well for him. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that moment... I knew that something bigger waiting for me. It's not a curse. It's just like a part of the game. Yep. And when she left, I started reading different books about the business and find out one between the lines message about every single successful case of wealthy person. They never give up. And they that doesn't care what people are saying to them. If they believe in what they're doing, they just keep doing until they hit the results. And... Uh, they just has no plan B, only yeah. plan A. Always move forward no matter what, if they believe in the stuff. And like that common thing was everywhere. And I put to myself that as a setup, like I, I, I understood. I was trying to crack the code, but I didn't understand that like, I cracked the code by understanding the simple things. I was thinking that it's, it's logical, you know, it's logical. But actually, this is exactly the secret pill of success. So at what point did you start moving into honor? entrepreneurship and starting to play around with the idea of you creating your own wealth yeah so i moved my wife in july 2017 and uh, i read the book poor dad rich dad robert kiyosaki yeah. uh, last year i met him 
It was incredible that's conversation. Awesome. That was my, that's my favorite book I've read. That was, I, I met him. We were to discuss like in general my journey and like uh, his stuff. And plus, I was just like saying to him how I appreciate for that book because it it just switched my brain that entrepreneurship actually it's not the bad stuff. That's yeah. where I changed my understanding because I was looking for more and more physical jobs because in my background always physical job yeah. and physical job was making giving me pennies. And when I read his book, I went to another book of the Quadrat of the Investors. I forget several books of Robert Kiyosaki. I just forget the names, but I really went through most of them on that time. And I like, shit, like entrepreneurship, investments, that's where I have to go. Like, what should I do? And I start Googling it and I found out one book, uh, ebook, starting from zero. Yep. Uh, it was Fred Lum. Which is, uh, is the, it was the guy who was selling courses. That time I didn't know what courses means, what it means advertising. I didn't know anything. I just found out starting from zero, start your e-commerce business with hundred dollars. I like hundred hundred dollars bullshit. Yeah, start e-commerce business. What is it all about? Yeah. Like, and I start reading one hundred eighty pages. Friday morning I woke up and I was, I, I moved to the apartment with seven guys in two bedroom apartment. So I was renting just a bed space, and my bed space was as a office for me i was studying there i was trying to find a job i was reading there and like other guys were having drunk like having fun and so on and like they invite me all the time like no no i'm the boring person like i always study and i was still trying to hustle so basically and i find out like this book and i read 180 pages in matter like of like a couple hours so like no freaking way no way is it possible i didn't know what facebook advertising means I didn't know what sponsored ad means. I didn't know what e-commerce means. And I was reading it. For me, it was mind-blowing opening like a subject that I said, I don't know how, I don't know when, but I'm going to be figuring it out and I'm going to be doing that till end of my life. The first time in 26 years, I was 26 at that moment. At 26 years, I find out what I want to do. Always for me, it was, I don't care what I'm going to be doing, just pay me. Just, yep. I want to get paid. More more job, more payments, more hours, no worries. I'm going to be there. But this moment, finally, I was able to understand. I want to do this. Advertising, e-commerce, what is all about? And I start studying and I create my first Shopify store. It was August 15 or 25, somewhere middle of August when I found out that book. So 29th of September, I opened my first Shopify store. MyKittyCatZone.com. MyKittyCatZone.com. Okay. Yeah, so it was like a, a cat niche a store. And again, I was like stupid enough to ask people who are not in e-commerce to like suggestions. <laughs> like, what do you think? What niche yeah. supposed to be? What? But anyway, yeah. And I started working in five different part-times. Main job, 7.30 till 5.30 p.m. Then... 6.30, I'm already uh, as a waiter, then like waiter in nightclub at night, then another day, I'm a supervisor in private villas, then Friday, Saturday, I'm a photo video shooting actor in Bollywood movies, in Abu Dhabi, or in the UAE commercials, like I was doing everything, everything, everything whatever, just to get cash to jump into the e-commerce, Yeah, because I knew that $100 is bullshit, so I, not, I need uh, cash. And instead of sending it to my wife, I was just preparing, preparing, preparing and start investing into e com. I start already making some quite good income around maybe two thousand five hundred dollars, which is disaster, but it was that moment it was wow. moment it was a lot. Yeah, for me it was a goal to be on three thousand a month and I will be great. And I will be great and I will be just happy. And that moment, like, it was my goal. I started reading, writing the goal, like, uh, since 2016. My yearly, my monthly, my daily goals, where I want to be, how I want to achieve, be, again, because of the books of wealthy people. And at that, I started notice that it started working out. I'm getting different jobs. I'm getting possibilities. I found out e-commerce. So, basically, everything what I was making, I started spending on the ads. And I was doing dumb mistakes. I mean, I was listening to thousands of influencers in YouTube and never focus on one single strategy. So every 15 minutes, one hour, I was changing the strategy. I was changing that. I was 
like I was just spending money to to the air. I yeah. was just investing into the Mark Zuckerberg business. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so nothing you else. You put money in Mark Zuckerberg's pocket, <laughs> but no strategy behind it's, what you were doing. No, uh, no set strategy at all. Like not understanding even that there is a columns with the key with the metrics, <laughs> and you need to set KPIs for yourself what to follow. I didn't understand. All that. I was just I was thinking I will spend dollar and we'll get to back. Yeah, but it never happened. So I, I was sp- like spending thousand dollars and get back middle finger I mean, yeah. and zero sales yeah but you know what i noticed everyone are just quitting in a couple of hundreds investments and they quitting in e-commerce for me i was so obsessed with the idea and i saw that as the only one solution for my situation that i'm broke my wife saying to me you have back to you have to come back to ukraine i don't have even the cash for the uh, tickets because everything in e-commerce everything like uh, i'm like for for living and like I, I was embarrassed to go back to ukraine after five years being in UAE, when my guys in in hospitality buying apartments, I'm traveling, so on, and I'm one guy with the baby upcoming, only one guy with the baby who about about to become a parent, and I have no cash, nothing, all, nothing. And my wife in 25 years, she was suc- she was successful lady in Ukraine. She moved to UAE for disaster job just to be with me. And when he, she came back to Ukraine, she had to stay in the village with her, with her parents. And for her, it was so embarrassing that she has husband and she cannot uh, rent apartment for herself. Husband can't afford it to her. And she was always like feeling really disaster. And I was feeling as a man, like even worse. And when she was pushing me, come back to Ukraine, we'll figure it out. We'll start from scratch. And I was no freaking way. I will make it work. And I was like obsessed. I was obsessed with that stuff. And then I found out what the crypto, crypto means. In November 2017, Bitcoin started growing. One scamming ex-friend uh, said to me, you have to invest here money. I said, I don't have. He said, like, figure it out. And I opened my first credit card in UAE. I took $3,000 from credit card, invested in crypto. It was giving like nice percentage. I was like, wow, wow, wow. And suddenly... They just shut down the website and like uh, run away with all the investments. And then now I have a debt. And my wife saying, stop it. Like nothing is working there. Nothing is working there. I, I have debt now. And my wife saying, stop it. Come back to Ukraine. Otherwise, I will divorce you. I like, I don't, I don't give a shit. Like I will make it work. And uh, I don't care if you're getting divorced me. I'm doing that for you and our baby. And baby already was uh, uh, that moment to uh, give birth. So, and end of January... 2018 i really staying on the middle of like nowhere i have uh, and then another was no part times for a bit because of the after new year stuff and like now i have no not enough income to handle like i'm just this disaster place i got uh, paid to the guy who ran away i paid to crypto they run away and like all this stuff and this is exactly the moment for some of the people uh for most of the people who are starting their stuff you have, you will have always that moment. You will feel that it's the, it's the feeling when you have no solution and there is only way to quit. Yep. Although, like there is always that kind of like break, breaking moment. So I was on the 14th floor of uh, our office, uh, gas company, in the suit. I already have two suits. I'm like, I'm, I'm great boy. <laughs> so like I'm in the one of the suits with tie in the shoes on the 14th floor. Uh, looking in the Dubai downtown from the office, from meeting room, and my friend calling me from online. I already started getting friends online because of e-commerce, and he calling me that crypto guys scam us. I like what? He said, yeah, there is no mu- much money, and the the guy, he's a good friend of mine till till now. <laughs> he loves to give the bad bad news in the worst way. There is people suicide. There is blah blah blah. I like. Oh my, oh my god. god. I don't know. The the guy just killed himself. He just jumped from the roof and I'm just staying and I'm like what like this yeah. shake you like I'm understanding that in e-commerce I can move on. I have not enough cash. Uh, crypto run away like and all the stuff. It's uh, middle of January and I'm staying and shaking like that and just looking on this downtown on the suit and I'm like what is freaking going on with my life? I'm going worse, worse, worse and worse. Even with this nice picture around me that people thinking that I'm successful. I like, what is wrong with me? And I just stay staying and almost crying and just, I don't know what to do. I'm completely lost. And there was two options. And I'm saying to myself, like in my mind, well, I will, I will start crying and just like lay down 
in the embryo position, I'm going to be crying and my life will go just to the hell and I won't be able to handle all the things. Uh, you know, like, and my wife will get divorced with me most, most probably and so on. Or no matter what, I will move forward. And I'm like, how? It's like, it's not possible. And I made a decision. That's important. I'm even sharing that with my sales guys time to time. When I see that they were overwhelmed, I'm saying, leave the phone at home and spend one day outside. Like just spend time with yourself, with your friends, with your girlfriend, boyfriend, go fuck, go laugh, do whatever you want, but leave the phone outside. I mean, because they're working on the phone. Yeah. And just like make a detox. And that's what I decided to myself. It was one evening only when I wasn't really working. I just went home. I left my phone and I just went outside. It was Albarsha in Dubai. I was walking. I was walking. I don't even remember like what was happening. I remember that I was just walking. I don't know if there was thoughts in my brain. I don't really. It's feeling that I didn't have anything. I was just, I was so destroyed that I was just walking, walking. It's like rock bottom, basically. Yeah. And uh, by 9.30 or something, I came back and just fell down to sleep. And I woke up in the morning like, let's move forward. Like and so, and so laughing from myself. What do you mean? There is no solution. Yeah. Like, yeah, what? Uh, what does uh, yeah. forward look like? Yeah. So I said, I don't give a shit. Like, I'm moving forward. And like, by somehow, I like borrow money here. I just borrow money there. I got salary there. So like, I just like start recovering. Uh, I mean, to play around with the cash. And in few days, that's the thing. You will not get instant solution. But in few days, I'm getting a call from one of my friends who was trying e-commerce as well. He said, Have you seen? Have you seen? I said, What? There was influencer Mark Hager. He's still my mentor for in life. He's doing now real estate before he was helping with e-commerce. And basically, have you seen Mark, Mark Hager just like open the uh, discount for his mastermind? It, it was closed Facebook group where he's going live twice a week and going through the ad accounts and saying what exactly is the mistake and what needs to be done. And basically... He's running offer now instead of $97 per month, which is, was super expensive yeah. for me. For me, it was like, oh, come on, no way. I won't pay anyone online $97. I already paid crypto and $300 to the guy to manage my ads. But at the end, there is nothing. And like $97 is too expensive. I won't be able to pay it. And no, no, he's running now $47 only till end of the month. And it was like 26th of January something. I said, seriously? Hmm. It's really expensive for me. But maybe I have to give a shot. It's like 150 dirhams. Yeah. But for me, it was like the crazy amount. Like 150,000. Yeah, yeah. It was like really like if I would pay now maybe 15, 25, like and uh, the debt would be feeling like, no, even not that. But really, I, w- I don't have anymore that kind of feeling. Not about the uh, I have a cash or I don't have cash. I don't have that feeling in my mind anymore. Yeah. If it's valuable, it's valuable. And I knew that it's valuable. I'm like, I will give a shot. It's the last shot for me. Like I have to. And 29th of January 2018, first call, and he explaining that I haven't done setup. I haven't. I have to follow these KPIs. I have to done setup of the metrics. I like metrics. Yeah. <laughs> it was so simple, so simple. But he shows me simple, logical things. Uh, what I have to look on. He point out that I have already been in product for a while. I just didn't know what I'm doing. And basically, in the first 15 days of the working with him. I made my first eight thousand dollars in Shopify store, and that was like so forty six dollars a month to eight thousand dollars. That's the power of the taking action with the mentors. If it's the right mentor, definitely it's always always like that. And I was like freaking no way. And now I never stop for sure because like I know it's working because my everyone was telling me it's calm. It doesn't work. My wife was saying to me that you're in secta. They ca- taking money from you. She didn't understand the commerce. Like, yeah. I don't know. She was thinking that I'm in real. I said, no, no, no. There is American groups in, fa- in Facebook where people sharing their experience and so on. She said, it's a secta. Go out of there. Don't pay the money. I said, no, no, you don't understand. Like, anyway. So basically, when I started getting cash, I was like, that's proven. And then in the next week, I lost everything. <laughs> It stopped uh, producing, uh, algorithms has been changed and that's not produced anymore and I lost everything what I made and that's fine. I mean, it's happening, but at that time it was first time experience it was painful and I started to over, I created another store uh, and like for the watches and some other stuff 
and like start making here and there a couple of hundreds, then a couple of thousand a month, not couple, like thousand a month by summer 2018. And then I understand now I'm able to pay for my bills and I can leave Dubai. I don't need to stay there. My, my wife in Ukraine, we can start our life from scratch in Kiev in Ukraine. So, and basically like I took a couple of clients in Dubai again, and when I figure out Facebook, I like, okay, what, how else I can make money extra? I found out the gym who need a lead generation. I found out a restaurant who need lead generation, beauty salon. So I took all of them $300 a month, something like that, plus my personal income income. And like, you know, I was good to go back home and feeling comfortable. And then uh, by September, I start partnering with one friends from Masterminds from US, Maz. And we open our, our we, uh, he had a store, but he doesn't like ads. I love ads, but I don't like management of the store. Yeah. So we decided to combine the power. And our first months together, October uh, 2018, $50,000 in sales, break even, no no profit. <laughs> but 50000 I saw the number. Like, yeah. And then November, 150 profitable. December, 150 plus profitable. Uh, March 2019, 250 plus, super profitable. And like the story st- start changed. I mean, there was much worse problems much harder solutions but at the end there was a different game it was already different like financial problems financial issues when you were already on the different position in life and it was so fast moving so fast and then people start asking me to coach them i was shocked me yeah <laughs> but i was sharing all my journey of fails in facebook groups and in my facebook profile and then uh when i start winning people start just attacking me because they know I'm real. I was shitting all the time. Yeah, they were they watching went, you fail. Yeah. Now you're, because now you're it a perfect really example. Good. It's like, oh, well, if he it's could do possible. it, I can do it. Like, it's possible. It's real. And always, I never sell anything. I was always saying, guys, it's real. Even when I was failing, it's real. We can do it. Don't give up. I was always like motivating people like in the posts. Yeah. I never tried to sell. And people were just coming to me again and again. And I start mastermind. I start one-on-one coachings, and after that, in March, by the way, 25th of March, 2020, four years ago, recently we celebrate four-year anniversary of GSM Growth. I opened the GSM Growth Agency and start hiring people, and we move so fast, so fast. Now we are 34 people, four years in the industry, managing Shopify stores, building advertising ecosystems for brand owners, for down for you stores in Shopify by running ads on TikTok, Facebook, Google, uh, email SMS marketing, and like doing doing all that things, which just allows me like to become a completely different person and plus change of 34 team members. Most of them lives. Most of them I changed their lives because uh, they were working hard as me before. My uh, Some of them from my the neighborhood, from my childhood, who moved to Abu Dhabi because of me. And yeah. then I took them for my company because I know how hungry they are. And I know that they will do whatever it takes to produce. Now one of them moved to, to Canada recently, one still in Ukraine. But they are like the most humble, the most hungry, the most like people in the company who was pushing for the results and, and making like income which they couldn't even imagine in the past and in, in their life like t- ten thousands time to time like up to like the biggest months it was up to twenty thousand months like uh so I, I i'm i'm just grateful and proud that i was able i was able to make it that decision in 2017 do not uh give a fuck but find out how and change my life and my son was the my why and that's basically what was keeping me driving, my son. I can't fail. I can't come broke again. I can't allow things go opposite. And now whatever is happening in the business, a war in 2022 happened in Ukraine. And when I was uh, leaving country with my son on my, on my hands, my wife was in Spain that time. I said, if I will manage this, I will manage any kind of business problems any kind of because i like it was apocalypse it was it was disaster and it is still disaster unfortunately but that moment when i i managed to put my son in the safe place i said to i just record our message to my managers in the company guys all of you now secured uh, saved uh like i handle my stuff if we manage this like 
there is no business problems which we cannot manage. And we just like always have troubles, we manage it. Have troubles, we manage it. And there is no solution. Okay, let's find out the solution. So yeah. it's usually this kind of mindset. So yeah, that's like all this long speech. I'm apologize for making making you sleep most, most probably. <laughs> but uh, just trying to let you understand that everything is possible. It's just up to us how big effort we will put. And I shared just a small percentage of the whole story of the, all the things behind, which is like was put in... Uh, like breaks and underwater stones in front of me to like stop it. I have to stop it. I have to stop it. Like no way. I a couple of times almost crashed on the car because I was like, exhausted. But it just like, it doesn't matter. Just like you have to do what you are doing at the beginning to handle it and then play hard but smart as well. But from the beginning you have to figure it out how to play hard at least. My biggest takeaway from all of that, one, it's an amazing story and Really, at the end there, I mean, very unfortunate situation with the war, but the fact that you were able to keep your family safe, and even what we talked about off camera, move all of your family, the women, make sure everybody was in a good place, all because you had one plan, and it was plan A, you didn't give up on it, and you created the wealth, and you created the situation that you always wanted, that gave you the ability to make sure that all of your people were taken care of. And, and that's really just a beautiful moment there. Like, such a pure success story from start to finish. And you did everything right. You were given every objection. You were given every reason to quit. You were given every reason to give up and just go back and live a mediocre life and not do anything more than what normally, like what you would normally do. You didn't take that route. You continued to work hard. Like you said, you were falling asleep while driving, working multiple part-time jobs. And that, in turn, allowed you to deal with the hardest situation in your life right now and make it where you were able to operate it successfully is is really amazing. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's just, it's not about, like, it's not about me and all. Everyone has their own stories. And some of them are, like, you will have goosebumps, most probably all the all the way through the story. It's, it's just about, I had no chances for success. Who I am? Ukrainian guy from the small city of Zaporozhye, uh, who is stand up in the Dubai, in Abu Dhabi. It's, it's the biggest success for me. And I was able to stop there. And, like, uh, still work in hospitality, maybe in some, like, gas company which is like still it was disaster decision but anyway keep working on someone and doing the wrong decisions in life i and i had no chances for success just for obvious reasons because why why would i but i just deny deny that uh, moment that i'm not good enough i mean everyone can achieve everyone after studying the wealthy people and plus Understanding that I'm not, uh, I'm not allowed quit happen to my life. I'm just always moving forward, whatever it takes. It shows me that's the only secret pillow from uh, success and what's putting difference between average person and uh, incredible, like uh, successful person. And still, nothing is sweet. Nothing. It's like now I'm managing agency, real estate company, uh, software company. And like, uh, it's tough. It's like, and a lot of, a lot of BS happening. I mean, yeah. unpredictable stuff happening and it's not easy, but like, I just put myself in the position where when I'm on the uncomfortable position, I'm feeling comfortable. And that's why I believe the best skill which you have to create for yourself and then just move forward no matter what. I, I love that quote there, like being comfortable in uncomfortable situations is one of the hardest things to learn. But in business, in entrepreneurship, you are constantly put in uncomfortable situations because things just happen. You can't control, you don't know what's going to happen. And getting yourself, I mean, you, you put yourself in insanely uncomfortable situations from the start of moving to Dubai all the way to right now and owning multiple companies, you've just built a tolerance to it and now can operate under these these conditions. And that's a big reason why you're so successful. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's that's the only reason. I'm not the smartest guy in the room. That's definitely. I'm not uh, good enough in English. I'm not good enough uh, in understanding several things. But just like no, not accepting the fail and uh, finding if I'm not good enough in something, finding out who is good and learning from them or hiring them, let them join to the team and help us to manage what we are not good enough on. That's another like secret of like successful growth of the business. If you're going that way, that's like, or find out someone who you're going to be studying from or find out someone who's going to be joining your team and helping you drive into the next level by sharing their skills uh, as a value to your company. So we've gone through your whole story. As we wrap up here, I like to ask a question to take us to what the future you might want. And the question is, in 10 years from now, you look back at this conversation and this moment in your life, what would you, what would need to happen between now and 10 years for you to feel like you were successful? Uh, I would say a control of my time because like sometimes even like days not super productive could be, but I feel like I was like have not enough time to manage, have not enough time for like uh, having enough enough uh, free time with my family. Now I have uh, two boys. So like uh, definitely it's just feeling comfortable of my schedule and uh, like multiple investments and all that stuff, it's up to us, but definitely it's going to be part of it because uh, ne- next stage, it's already there, like more and more investing in different fields. That's what I'm doing right now. And in the same time, like, uh, about exit and all that stuff it's up to our different people for me I'm just looking to to be able to spend time with family much wiser I keep changing the lives of others because this is so like priceless it's a freaking like I'm the I'm an ethical person ethical business owner and I'm a honest guy that I know where I was and I know how painful it, it is there and I, I definitely want to try as much as I can to like help more people to overtake overtake their past to the better future so changing the lives having better schedule in feeling of the managing of the schedule i would say that way because i have quite good schedule and uh, have more free time with the family amazing i mean you're selling me i would love to go work for you um but i just want to say thank you so much for sitting here and, and one being so open for the people listening and being willing to share the tough parts of your story and talk about the the great parts of your story. Uh, and again, thanks for making the time also to come here and have this conversation. I really appreciated it. I'm really excited now to be able to follow you and know you a little more personally. So as you continue to be successful and, and post about all these goals we just talked about, I'm, I'm excited to be able to watch them and watch you continue to grow. I appreciate it, Andres. I really appreciate for having me here and for everything what you said. I'm looking forward. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach me out in the Instagram DMs. So my nickname Ecom by Anatoly, Anatoly Labinsky. So you can uh, definitely like uh, speak to me there directly. And uh, it was enjoyable conversation, Andres. Thank you for letting me be here and as well uh, let me share my story. Hopefully it will be some kind of example for someone else on the dead side. Yeah, for sure. And all of his information is going to be linked in the bio below, whether you're listening on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you'll be able to go in and find all of his information. I I encourage you to go and connect with him. And especially if you're in the e-commerce space, make the connection network. And then like we talked about earlier, one person that watched this, I would love for you to reach out to him and tell him where he inspired you where there was a moment in the interview that you learned something or or had a realization because we're both in it for the same thing. We want to impact the people on the other side of the camera and just impact one person every episode is a huge win because then that person goes to the next person and impacts somebody. So one person, if you gained anything amazing from this episode, reach out to Anatoly and let him know what it was and say thank you for him sharing his story and giving you that knowledge. I appreciate doing this. Yeah, thank you so much.